Welcome to another side of Tales from the Blind Side. I got my brothers, Jamal Jackson, center stage 67 with me, Todd Harriman's. And we're going to be able to now that we've come out of the bye week. Here we go. We're going to discuss the New York Fighting Giants. First of all, man, how'd you guys enjoy your bye week, man? I missed you guys. Yeah. yeah. I missed you guys. I missed our time that we get to chat together. We should have done a bye week special. You know what? I thought about it. But then I was like, you know what? I mean, you know, I, I don't want to bother right. y'all, man. You know, enjoy, enjoy all good. your time. Yeah, all know? good. Yeah, I agree. I'm a bit of a recluse, so I'll just leave people alone. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to bother anybody. I was like, you know, it's a bye week, man. You know, just got to relax. You know, what are we going to, you know, tell a story or two? I don't know. Fuck it. I, just, I mean, but... what can you do anyway, though? Like, really? Like, I... the whole world is shutting down again. So, yeah, like. Yeah. Numbers are climbing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they already just shut down. They, they had a news come out, report come out today that they're shutting down the fans in the stadium. So no more fans in the stadium anymore. Yeah, that, 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 that's a, that, that actually, be, actually can be beneficial. For uh, us, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that works. At a time like this, that, that, that works, man. <laughs> we don't do well in front of people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, you know, right now, it's just, man, what the fuck? I mean, <laughs> it's been pretty rough, man. Yeah, I mean, you come out of the bye week, you go into the bye week with, you know, you, you beat Dallas, you beat Danucci, you know, Uncle Rico. <laughs> Uncle Rico, you, you beat Uncle Rico and company. And it's Must like, win. all right, yeah, yeah, I mean, you, there you go. So you go into the bye week, you know, Doug was like, well, you know what? Damn that. I'm not giving y'all the full week off. You're going to have to come in and practice on Wednesday because we need to get better. That was the message. Hey, look, we need to get better. And then here we are. You know, you have a walkthrough in the middle of the week on Wednesday, a walkthrough. How much can get done in a walkthrough during the middle, like uh, on a bye week? Maybe they should have took that Wednesday and game plan a little differently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe came in on maybe came in on Tuesday got yeah. a little bit more better maybe maybe get a get a get a get a get a Tuesday Wednesday session in I mean for real I, I mean, mean I mean sprinkle a little 10 10 10 in there you know Maybe like, a 10, 10, 10. You know, three quarter speed, you know? Hey. Get a little 10, 10, 10. Get the blood flowing, man. You know, 10, 10, 10 <laughs> is your friend. Get yeah. you right on through. But I'm just like, man, what the, what the hell? And then you come you come back. Oh, Philly, Philly spoiled a, a post bye week, bro. We, Andy Reid spoiled Philly post bye week for so many years that we expect a W coming out of the bye. Like, it's like. What else are you going to do than out game plan the other team and, and out rest the other team and prepare? What else? <laughs> Why? Hey, we're going to win. Speaking, I mean, speaking of out rest, like how do you give guys rest days after a bye? Didn't they just rest? That's you know what I was going to get to that. I was, so you yeah, how does that happen? You come out of the bye week. I mean, you just, and I know, okay, you, you get this full week off, or you don't get the full week off. You have to come in on Wednesday. And this is the thing about this, because they have to come in every day anyway during this bye week to get, right. make sure that they get the COVID test. Right. So, you know, you really didn't get a chance to get away and recharge, but you get those days off and you come back to practice and you still give Fletcher Cox a rest day. Like, what the fuck is that? I mean, I don't know, man. Um, I mean, that's just Doug, man. You know, he. I think, you know, his 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 way of coaching. He's like too much of a player's coach because he's not one of those crack the whip kind of coaches. Like, you know, just from yeah, you know, from when he coached us. You know, I know he was like the quarterback coach when, when we were there, but you can kind of sense that. You know, he would be somebody that you know you're gonna play hard for, but I mean. Hell, if it's a if it's a chance of me sacrificing myself getting injured or playing, or, I mean, or not playing, I'm I'm gonna not play. Like he's just one of those type coaches where you know they don't fear him enough. Like I guess disciplinary wise, because you remember it was reports last year where guys was uh, coming to rehab late or not yeah. showing up to rehab at all. Like 
I mean, where they do that at, man? I mean, that that was never that was never an issue when Big Red was here, because hell, he find you and you know Rick them made sure you was where you needed to be. So <laughs> I just think it's just a disciplinary around. There's a little little lenient, you know. Yeah, and if you didn't show up, the elders came and and would put the pressure Elder. on you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the elders, yeah. they'd be like, "Hey, so uh, where were you this morning? You were supposed to be at rehab." Yeah, but you really didn't even like. We really didn't have to get into all of that. Because uh-huh. I think guys kind of held each other accountable. And, and I think, you know what, one of the things that I kind of put when you look at Coach Reed versus Doug, I think it's the coaching staff, man. Because at the end of the day, yeah. you know, you got to have a, you know, a head coach is only as tight as his coaching staff. And when you can, whenever you have a player just say, hey, man, you know what, I need a day or I can, I'm running late or whatever the situation is, that's up to your staff. Doug can't police everything. Your position yep. coaches need to be handling some of that. So to me, I kind of feel like the staff isn't where it needs to be to give Doug the support he needs. Now, I think Doug can help himself by just saying, fuck y'all, I'm going to fine you. But, you know, you can't keep, you can't allow some guys to have a day off, then try to hold everybody else to the fire. And then you want to do this for the other player. Then don't want to, you know, you can't do I that. Think- you got to. <clears throat> I think you're exactly right. It, it, it falls on he, – he's trying to lean too much into being a player's coach. He's trying almost – you're already a player's coach. You don't have to try to be a player's coach. That's the extra moves that it's, it's making it soft and it's making it kind of choppy, you know. Coach Reed had that supporting staff like you were talking about. Man, if we didn't feel like we wanted to practice, we would be bitching about it all morning about not wanting to practice. And then Juan would catch wind of that and he'd be like, you know, hey, Todd, you know, Come on, just come out there, push through it. I'll take care of you. I'll take care of your reps. For yeah. you. you know what I mean? And, like, yeah. that that's exactly what you're talking about, Trey. But I don't know if they have that. You know, I think it's just like uh, Doug from the top down. It's like, oh, uh, no, nah, we'll just set him. You know, he needs well, rest. You well, know and, I mean? and you know, and you know, like, I guess the coaching staff would take on the, I guess, the, you know, the leniency of the head coach, you know, because Big Red was kind of like no nonsense where yeah. you wouldn't try one with that. Hey, man, I can't practice this day. He was like, bullshit. You practice this day. <laughs> hey, we work hard. We work we hard, work right. Hard. You know, he'll, he'll do something to manipulate you to run through a fucking wall and get through practice. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just think that, that just needs to be a message that needs to be relayed throughout. Like, you can't just be giving guys rest days and time off when it's, if, when it's not needed. If it's not concerning an injury or whatnot or illness, or something COVID related. I mean, I mean, what's the use? Because obviously, it's showing up in a bad way on Sundays when they go out there. Absolutely, and then I mean, you give days off like this. And one of the things I know that there was a reports that has been going out where guys have been late coming to meetings and stuff like that because they're saying that because of all the COVID restrictions and everything, you have to drive in at different times. So before for us. We would have to show up at 8.30 for that first meeting that we always would get into and do ourselves, and then our day would start on from there. But guys are showing up late, and Doug Doug has mentioned it in a couple of his press conferences, saying that, hey, one of the biggest issues that we deal with are guys showing up not on time because traffic. And I'm like, what kind of shit is that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I found that kind of alarming, being as though that was the first time I heard it. And I had already been retired when I heard it. Like, I, I didn't hear it when we were there. Because yeah. it was like, hell, you get here no matter what. You know how the, how the school kill in 76 is in Philly. Yeah. Like, you woke up extra early. There, there were yeah. no excuses. And if you're going to allow excuses, then you're going to allow guys to take plays off and to take practices off and to miss games and things of that nature. So, I mean, like I said, it has to be an echoed effect throughout the building. Man, I remember one time, dude, because of, I don't know, it was some type of medication I was taking or something. I think it was a Toradol reaction or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I had yeah. taken so much damn Toradol that my, one of my eyes had flared up and it got real light sensitive. And I'm like, hey, man, I can't come in, man. I can't fucking see. They were like, well, you know what? Just get here. Man, I had to drive from, <laughs> from my house. <laughs> And I'm driving across the bridge with one <laughs> hand over my eye. And Wally was like, hey, T, just get here and we'll, we'll take care of you. And so I get there and he was like, all right, all right, we're going to sit down and watch something. I'm like, why? Man, my eyes are light sensitive. That's okay. We'll just turn all the lights off. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry about it. We'll just turn all the lights off. Don't worry about it. But we're going to get this film in. You know, I'm like, 
All right, you know, but that's just hey, how T, it Hey, T, if you need to, just close your eyes and just listen to what I had to say. Just close your eyes if you need to. <laughs> just let my <laughs> voice just carry you through this right now. <laughs> so we'll just turn these lights off and we're going to get this film in. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get saying. it in, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, just hold, you hold your hand over your eye and look with your good eye at what I'm talking about right here because we're about to get this work done. But I'm like, man, oh. you know, when you're saying that guys are showing up, like, like what kind of shit is that, man? I, You know, it shows that where this team is, it shows where the staff is. And I don't know, it, it, even if he were to start trying to lay down the law, I think it's too late. Because you've already gotten, you guys are kind of setting their ways. You're going to have to wait until next year. Yeah, I think it's far too, it's, you know, they they, they too far in the game to try and like remove mm-hmm. people and try to set a different standard. Like the coach is already set now. You know, and if you're trying to look to like the older guys to kind of like police the younger guys or kind of like steer the culture in, I guess, the right way, then some of those older guys got to lead by example. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of hard to do that when you do have some guys that are up, up there to actually deserve time off practices here and there. But I mean, you know, coming off, off a bye and then the way the performance kind of like unfolded, man, I, Man, they needed everybody out there, man. <laughs> yeah, and so you have this week come off. You, you you have a rest date. Then the report comes out that Connor Barron ended up coaching the defensive line throughout the whole week because the defensive line coaching staff had to um, be removed out of the building. From oh, COVID. the COVID dude, yeah. So then now you call Connor Barron down out of the – he's a special assistant to Howie. To Howie, right, yeah. And then you make him a defensive line coach for the week? Hey, man. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Dude. They made an offensive line coach the fucking defensive coordinator. Yeah, I, and I, oh, I agree with that move. I thought that move was awesome. <laughs> I thought that move was awesome. Uh, I did not. Uh, <laughs> no. Come on, man. He had a lockout, dude. It was a oh, lockout, no. and then they had not the awesome one, man. I mean, come on, man. We don't need to take that trip, bro. We don't need to I know, that man. That was I bad. thought it was an awesome idea. Damn that. Want, want right. as a yeah, D well. coordinator. I thought it was good. You thought it was awesome. I thought it was awkward, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Tomato, tomato. Oh I mean, you know. Oh my God, why you fuck me? <laughs> and I mean, I would just say to Connor being the D line coach like that, bro. They were in a fucking bind. Like, what are you gonna do? We gonna you do know, what? What are you gonna do? Thank God Connor was in the building, ate and I mean, COVID free, and had his bed <laughs> down there in the D line room. You know what I mean? So that he had to fucking leave too. He I went mean, all kind of hats. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know, maybe get a nice little bonus check. Yeah, you know I mean, maybe uh, I, I don't know. I mean, but that's just I mean, weird. I, that buddy, just sums up the season, though. It sums up the season. Twenty twenty, bro. Yeah, yeah twenty 2020. twenty. Like fuck it, hey, hey Sundays you. Sundays and sweatpants on Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we have, we have Troy out there teaching swim moves. <laughs> oh man, yeah. <laughs> Hey, put that mop down, dog. Come on out here, man. Let me come, on, yeah. come on, get this work. Yeah, come on, get this work. Show, show us your special move. You know, Trey, get the man lined up. Special move. move. Yeah, give you a hey. special move. Boy, hey, dog, no, that is the true definition of all hands on deck. All like, hands I on mean, deck. the man comes to D-line in a week. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Like, hey, man. <laughs> Bro, my hat's off to Connor. I mean, hey. Jesus. I would have probably said, nah, dude, I can't do that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Bro>. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, damn. It, 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 no, it, no, it, no. I'm here for personnel and <laughs> managing stuff. Like, I, yeah. But it looked like the defensive line, I mean, it looked like you, you had with the, the situation because, I mean, you know, they were getting pushed around out there in this game. You know, I mean, it didn't look as sharp that you wanted them to look. And I don't know if, if Connor, if having Connor out there would have made it a little bit more effective. I mean, they can't, they finished the game with three sacks. But I mean, you know, when you look at it, it looked like they were out there just getting shoved around. Like they had a week of just, hey, you know, so what do y'all usually do? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I felt like it looked 
like our D line was playing big on penetration and they just took advantage of that. Like the running back was real patient just to see like where his guys were going to direct the, the D lineman. And then he would just kind of hit the crease. And I mean, our backers have been getting their shit pushed in. So like, that's not going to help either. You know what I mean? Like, there's no run support from the second level. And if we're able to be, they're able to be patient and just kind of direct, you know, use our penetration against us. It, it, it hit big for him, and it was it was kind of gnarly. But I don't know if that's completely on, on Connor Barr. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it, it I, I, I think also it was kind of you know a, a coaching error by Swartz or whatever. I mean, in the first game, you saw the quarterback kind of gassed you a little bit with his feet and with the whole zone read. And I mean, time after time, this game they had the defensive end crashing in, going up at the dive when. The quarterback, he's like one of the biggest threats as far as running the ball and, and show. He had two touchdowns on the ground. Yeah. You know, he made up for tripping himself, you know, a couple of weeks ago at the link. But, you know, I just thought on the, de- the, the defensive side of the ball, that was like a big, like, attention to detail. Like, dude, he led the team in rushing the last time we played him. Why not come up with a scheme to, like, let's focus on this because this is a big part of their offense because the dude athletic and he can run. And they just it, – it, it's like they were still on the bye during this game. Like, they was going to come in with the same game plan they had a couple weeks ago and run that. That's what they did. And the, the dude, Daniel Jones, he made them pay. Duh, I mean, lit them up, man. I mean, duh, he had nine rushes for 64 yards. One of his touchdowns was called back for, for, for holding. For holding, but I mean, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, the defensive ends just came crashing downfield trying to take the look. They kept taking the cheese on that little zone read, and then bam, here he comes out of there. So that's why I'm kind of like, why wasn't the game plan to tell the DNs, look, I want y'all to jet up field. My defensive tackles and linebackers, y'all got to handle that A and B gap. But my DNs, y'all need to come up field just in case they come with that bullshit. And then here you go, Daniel Jones, give you that little zone read. Ah, now he's up field. My problem with, with some of this was I kept looking at Jalen Mills out there. And there were times when <laughs> <laughs> there were just times out there when I'm like, you know, I, I looked at his press after press conference and he was just like, man, we all pissed off. You know, everybody got to play better. And I'm like, all right, cool. So when I went back and watched the film, I'm like, well, damn, where the pissed off Jay Mills at, man? <laughs> there were a couple of times where it was kind of like he was ducking that, that contact. Where that first touchdown, where it was on the ran right Jones, by him. Ran right by him, motherfucker. <laughs> dog, you got to come down there and crash that shit, dog. I mean, you got to yeah. tight end. Come. What you watching? You know what I'm saying? You see him coming. You got to go and crash it. It was just too many times where I felt like, dog, you know. You, you well, know, they you, weren't pissed off yet. They weren't pissed off yet. They ain't lose yet. Yeah. yeah. And they, when they're running that zone re or, you know, whatever the hell that was where they – keep it with the quarterback, you know, isn't that's a running play. Yeah. So that means take a shot at the quarterback every time. Like he's carrying out the face. You light his ass up. Like they weren't they weren't touching. They was going straight for the running backs. Dude will keep it and gain like seven, eight, twelve, fourteen yards in the touchdown. I'm like, dude, every time they do that, man, just lay his ass out. Just lay him out. But I mean here you go, you got Jalen Mills sitting back there backpedaling. You see everybody, all the action coming at him. Why not go ahead and just cut the tight end, create a pile? There were too many times where I felt like he could have just went ahead and taken out the uh, whoever that was trying to block him to create a pile, and then now you at least get everybody to rally the troops. But instead, he backpedaling and getting thrown out the club, and then now, you know, there it is, touchdown. And I'm trying, I'm starting to think, dog, Daniel Jones might be the fastest quarterback I've ever seen out there besides, I mean, oh. you know what I'm saying? It's, it just seems like they don't want to realize the ability of Daniel Jones. It's like right. they're just like ignorant to it. They're like, yeah. nah, nah. That he can't be that fast. He can't oh, be that fast. Just, we were all just out of place. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, no. Fell down. But like, yo, even if you watch their pursuit angles, when they're running at him, when they realize he has the ball, it's like they think he's running a 5-5 five, five or something. They, their yeah. angles are all fucked. Like yeah. they gotta, they gotta go back to the basic, basics and do them, them cone drills and angle of pursuit <laughs> drills or some shit. Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's just not what it needs to be. And I mean, I thought that the game plan by Schwartz 
just wasn't where it needed to be, man. I felt like we kept getting beat with the blitz. I think I thought that we didn't we didn't do a good job of disguising anything. It was extremely vanilla on the defensive side of the ball, and you know, and they just got pushed around. I mean, you saw one oh time. Oh my God! Go ahead, yeah. Speak about you getting pushed around. <laughs> yeah, you, you saw one time where you down on the end zone where you had the running back go over the top the first time. Then the second time you had where they just gave a double team to Fletcher Cox and he just kind of just backed on out of there. And I was like, all right, you guys got the touchdown. Let me move on <laughs> to the next thing. Now, you the guy that just came off a of bye week and had a rest day and just getting shoved around out there. Yeah, yeah that was a bit disappointing because, you know, this the, the, the front has been pretty stout against the run, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, and then you let this team come in here. Not only was it the quarterback getting loose on the outside – I mean, it was Gallman as well. Like, yeah. there was creases in there all day. And I just felt, you know, offensive line and defensive line-wise, hell, they got beat up yesterday, man. It was yeah. it was sad. Like, both lines didn't come to play. Yeah, yeah I mean. I, just, I like the Giants. I like their game plan yesterday. They just came out. They were running the ball. They were throwing some nice outs. Yeah, you know, one play I saw, that they, they brought that shovel pass out. It was almost like yep. a double reverse yeah. thing, shovel mm-hmm. pass. Yeah, the Eagles need to eat that up right now and put it in. Yeah, like, absolutely. That's, that's, that's some kind of the creativity you need, but but we're just not seeing it right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you know, to come out there, you give up 150 yards rushing to a team like this. I mean, you know, th- that wasn't needed. You, this was a, a, the type of game that we needed to come out there and enforce our will, but it didn't fucking happen. It just, well, they're yeah. all pissed off. They're all pissed yeah. off. Everybody's yeah, well, pissed off. I mean, when you only score 17, you give up 27 after a yeah. bye. Uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. It, All right, well, it, it happens. Before we move on, man, let's go ahead and get us a little word on body check. Ty, go ahead and give us something on body oh, check. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, <baby. laughs> oh, man. The Eagles got you stressed the fuck out. Why not try CBD to help relax your anxiety? Body Check Wellness has got the CBD for you. It's the best fucking shit out there. And if you don't believe me, go check for yourself. It's all natural, hemp derived, full spectrum CBD oil and products. We also got dog treats. We got muscle rubs. We got oils. We got capsules. And we also got a whole new line of uh, mushroom products for focus and clarity and energy and all sorts of good stuff. So if uh, you want to go to bodycheckwellness.com and when you go to check out, type in promo code blindside, promo code blindside for 20% off your order. Uh, that's www.bodycheckwellness.com, B O D Y C H E. K dot com. All right. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Dude. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so now. Yeah, I wing it. Yeah, there you go. That, that, that's the that's best way I to do. do it, man. Freestyle. I mean, shit, this whole <laughs> thing is a freestyle. I mean, we, know, <laughs> we, just, we, just, we just turn on our cameras and mics and go. <laughs> it, just, it, just go. <laughs> it just go. All right. So here we go, man. Let's let's. All right. We got to switch over to the offensive side of the ball. Well, they're pissed yeah. off over there, too. You heard yeah. that. <laughs> they're, they're, they're very pissed off. They're very I'm pissed off. Fire. He's yeah. upset with a lot that, of people. I keep, I, you know what? I, I tweeted this thing earlier today, and I keep looking at these pressers, and Doug is so fucking pissed off. Like, I, I keep waiting for him to just walk in and just be like, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. You're cool. Fuck you. And out of there. And I'm out of this bitch. I mean, you know. Because it just seems like <laughs> hey, hey, who's the cool one? Who's the cool I don't, one? I don't know. I, I keep trying to figure it out. You know, is it Les Boeing just because he's the elder of the group? You know what I'm saying? Like, but Les seems like because of his voice, the way Les Boeing asks a question, that it probably irritates Doug even more, man. So. For sure. Oh man, yeah. Let's just, let's just let's just look sarcastic. Yeah, he just oh looks sarcastic. Oh my god! Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, dude, his name's Les. Yeah, I mean, Les. <laughs> Les just looks like he asked you a question that would just cut you to your soul. 
Like, I, wanna, I really want to whoop your old ass. <laughs> but Les, Les might be like a third degree black belt and you mess around and have your ass whooped. Yeah, up. man. <laughs> Fucking probably you practice Muay Thai or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be at Prop home McGraw. stretching. Just ready for Can't one of y'all to try. <laughs> but yeah, man, I mean, you know. So, yeah, okay, so... They put your buddy on the spot though with them questions though. They lead, they be leading right into him though, man. Like every right. time, every time. He sets himself up for it. First of all, let's just talk about Brett Favre. You know, Favre. You know, getting on national <laughs> TV. <laughs> juicy. Yeah, what's that? So juicy. Yeah. So, Drama. So, yeah. So so Brett Favre getting on national TV and just saying, you know what? Fuck that. They should have kept Foles instead of Wentz. Now, knowing that Wentz is kind of like, has always been, man, I love Brett Favre. He was a guy I watched growing up. You know, he's my, like, someone that I idol. And then Brett Favre gets on national TV like, fuck you. We should have got rid of your ass. <laughs> like, no, like, that shit has to hurt. You <laughs> <laughs> like he's my idol, you know. I love him. He Brett Favre, you know. <laughs> like Brett Favre, like now, nah, fuck that. We should have kept Foles over you. Like what kind of <laughs> shit is that? Like just, oh. Favre. Like, what, it's like meeting your idols and realizing they're a fucking asshole, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, like what kind of shit is that? Like Jordan, like fuck them kids. I ain't studying you. Like what is that shit? Oh man. Oh man. I yeah, like Favre. Totally unnecessary. Yeah, I mean, why would why would he even say that kind of stuff? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I have you no know, idea. Yo, you know, like Doug's it. his guy, so they're gonna be like, "All right, Doug, what's your boy saying about foals?" Yeah, what is he saying about your friend? He wasn't coerced to say anything, like anything. Like it went from, "Yeah, man, I just put it to injuries to." Man, you know what? I'm not wrangling. Fuck it. Make it a cap ball. Like, what? Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> you got boot cut. You got slim cut. You got all that. Man, fuck that. They should have hey. cut balls instead of wince. And, and just like, what? What, what, what? what is this coming from? And he's oh, like, yeah. hey, I know Doug. You know, and I know that Doug is a simple coach, and it's not Doug's fault. It's fucking it Wentz's fault. Yeah. It was emotional because he knows Doug. Oh, yeah. It ain't Doug for I know Doug. Doug's simple. Yeah. What? Yeah, what kind of shit is that? <laughs> what the fuck? Hey, man. Hey, man. I'm, I'm, yeah, simple man. Jack. <laughs> All right. <laughs> simple like, Jack. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there like, man, what, what, like, what's the, what's the, what's the what's, why? Simple Doug. Why? I mean, simple Doug. He, I mean, he just, he just constantly just, you know, it's just his, his, it, it's hard because he doesn't publicly like you don't hear the conviction in his voice for the support of his quarterback. Like that's no. I, that's done me. Like I don't I don't know why the why why does it take a reporter three fucking times to ask you? You know what they going at with this? Like, <laughs> like why? <laughs> I, I'm wondering with the media relations, why didn't they just prep Doug to say, "Hey, look, Doug, this is what's out there." Just nip this shit in the bud right out the gate. He should have yeah. started. He should have started. It was a story started. before the press conference. You should have started the press conference off like, "Look, I heard Brett Favre said some shit. Carson <laughs> Wentz is out. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, know, you know, I heard Brett Favre said some shit. I respect Listen. him, but Carson Wentz <laughs> is our quarterback. All right, that's it. Next first question, let's go. End of that, story, right? You know? <laughs> shut it down right out the gate. Instead of them asking you like three, four times, and then them having to like coach you into the answer. And then he like, look, man, if any one of y'all put something else in any words in my mouth, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> really? What, what what's gonna be the problem? <laughs> And like, no, man, you're a players coach, man. You ain't doing shit. Right. <laughs> Les Bowen in there rolling up his sleeves like shit. I mean, if we got to go, I mean. I mean uh, Les yeah. is in there pounding his spinach. Spinach <laughs> about to turn into Popeye. Yeah, yeah. Les, Les, 
Les Bowen rolling up his sleeves like, well, shit, if this is what we're going to do, this is what we're going to do then. I mean, you know. <laughs> Well, he be getting hot with all of them. Well, he got hot with Ruben Frank, too. Yeah. You go oh, in man. There, man. Be, that boy I, told Ruben, he told Ruben today because I guess he was asked about uh, Jalen Hurts, the fumbling or whatever. Like, you know, uh, are you going to address that? Or it was something to that nature. <laughs> Doug was like, what do you mean? He was like, you know, the fumble is like, which ones are you talking about? Are you talking about the center or are you talking about a running back or wh- which one? Well, obviously, you ain't watching the game. I'm like, whoa, whoa, Doug. Come <laughs> I'm telling you, Doug. <laughs> Doug is about, he, he about ready to come at that man. Fuck all y'all. Yeah, man. You know what? Let's take this shit outside. You know what? Let's, hey, let's, hey, let, 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 you know what? Let's meet at a non disclosed location. <laughs> Make sure you take a COVID test because I'm finna whoop some ass. <laughs> Yeah, he might have his breaking point, man. Yeah. Oh, man. It's wild. It, yeah. I mean, but he gives them a lot to write about, though, you know. Yeah. So he, he, keep, he keep money in their pocket because, man, boy, it's a lot of stuff to write about at his press conferences, man. And they create it, too. Yeah, I mean, it, it writes itself. I mean, you know, where, you know, you know he gets <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it writes itself. And you got Brett Favre just talking all this shit, and it's like, man, come on, man. And, and then, so then they uh, they they go in and ask Wentz, hey, Wentz, have you seen what Brett Favre said? Right. <laughs> so, so what did he say, Trey? Carson Wentz, well, no, I don't think I've heard it. I didn't know. I didn't. Uh, yeah, he was like, uh, it was some, unless someone wants to enlighten me on what it was, yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure if I heard anything. I'm like, bullshit. Not in this era. You know, somebody saw that shit, clipped it, and added your ass like, hell, yeah. hey, you. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do, boy. Yeah, got 47 <laughs> messages in his phone. Yeah, no, no, you got, you got, man, not, not in this era here, man. Not in this era right here. Motherfuckers will at your ass, put it right in your face. Here you go. <laughs> this is what Brett Favre said about you. Man, that shit. Yeah, but that, I mean, that has to be kind of like, I don't know, man. I kind of feel sorry for the guy because Doug is over here, like, defending his homie, and he's supposed to be defending me. I'm his quarterback. Like, yeah. like I yeah. mean, at least, you know, don't make it too obvious, man. I understand, all right, the first time you want to, like, disregard a question and say, yeah, that's his opinion. I respect his opinion. But then the second time, you repeat the same thing you said the first time. It's like, damn, dude, they asked yeah. you that question again for a reason. Yeah. Like, they don't repeat the same answer. But, nah, he had to make it a story. Like, it's just, it's just crazy, man, because I don't think, you know, even though given how bad he's been playing this year and, you know, ever since the whole 2017 MVP candidate season, like, I think – he should have the support of, you know, the man running the show, you know, at yeah. least in the me, like first and foremost, man, you nip that shit in the bud. So there is no speculation. Mm-hmm. Now it's, you know, you're creating like, I guess you're creating stories around an overcare, even though they went out and drafted fucking Jalen Hurts. Like they did it anyway, you know? So it's like, damn, at least get my back. And, you know, if you don't got my back behind closed doors, get my back in, in the media. And that's one thing I always admired about Big Red. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing I did like about Big Red. Big Red would always take it on the chin for us, never threw anybody under the bus, made sure that he covered us. I know a lot of people on the outside didn't like it, but at the end of the day, as a player, you appreciate it, knowing uh-huh. that the head coach has your back and is going to make sure that he covers you at all costs. Now, he might check you behind closed doors, but, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, you know, he will check you. <laughs> you think Doug's like, hey, you start winning a couple fucking games and I might get your back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker win. That's what I need you to do, win. And then, and then you, because I'm just, we're just going to talk about this press conference shit for a little bit. Because then you had Press Taylor get on, and then he was like, listen, this shit is unacceptable. He didn't say shit. But you know what I'm saying? This stuff is unacceptable around here. Carson knows better than what he's doing with the ball. And I'm like, don't come with all this tough talk in front of the kids. <laughs> yeah. My on the dad side. knows better too, but he still shits in the house sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then there's an accident. 
I mean, <laughs> he knows better. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you know, like, what's all this tough talk in front of the cameras? But then when you're on the sideline, I never see press talking with the quarterback, talking with Wentz. I don't ever see Doug over there talking with them. You see a lot of coaches come over there after something happens on the field, and they sit down with the quarterback and talk to him. Uh, I get the impression. I get the impression he's just kind of un, unapproachable. Like maybe in in that atmosphere. Atmosphere, like, yeah. He's, he maybe he's too fragile to try to to come at on the sidelines, and like you know he's got a. I don't know, bro. I mean, uh, that's kind of damn, the impression man. that I, I mean. That's the impression I get. Yeah, I mean we don't know because we're not there. But I, I I saw like one one third down, well not even a third down. I believe when he got tripped. And they had to punt. He's coming off the field. And, you know, Doug gives him, like, a minor tap on the chest. Like, come on, man, let's, let's go. And even that was a weird exchange. Like, it, yeah. it didn't feel organic. Like, it's like, yeah. are you trying to, like, you know, force this relationship that everybody wants y'all to kind of, like, you know, fucking cultivate in front of us so we know that y'all are on, 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 the, on the same page or y'all cool or whatever? Like, it's... It just doesn't seem it, it doesn't seem real sometimes. No, it's definitely not. It doesn't. And it's like, you know, okay, he had a mistake. Okay, let me show him that it's okay. Hey, bud, it's all right. Shake it off. You know, but where is Press Taylor? You're the coach. You're on the sideline. You're not up in the booth. Or unless, you know, I remember they showed him on the sideline one time. And I'm like, okay, even when the offense comes off the field, why isn't Doug over there talking to him? Like, what are you watching the defense for? Schwartz is handling that. I mean, hell, He's the you head know, coach, bro. Yeah. I mean, what, what the fuck? I mean, you know what I'm saying? They like, do. Your quarterback is struggling. Why not come over there and talk to him? If you need to sit down with him and say something to him or give him a word, hey, you know, hey, here it is. What, here it is. Slap him on the knee with your play sheet and be like, hey, come on, let's go. We need you out there. I mean, Whatever it is. Of, I mean, a bunch of coaches head coach differently. You know, like you got like, Say, for instance, Mike Tomlin, he's a defensive coach. Yeah. He, he, he's basically that motivational, I'm going to get these guys to play for me. He's that kind of coach. You know, he's on both sides of the ball, giving inspiration to these guys, coaching them up, yada, yada, yada. Then you got Big Red, Patrick Mahomes. He's a quarterback guru. He's always yeah. in here. You know what I'm saying? He'll give the defense, like, hey, come on, let's go get some turnovers, yada, yada. But he's mainly focused on Pat Mahomes. Exactly. And then got, like, the Doug Peterson type quarterback who – all he wants to do is just call plays. Like, that's all he wants to do. Like, he even told the media, like, Ew, as long as I'm, I'm here as the head football coach, this is what I'm doing. I like to do it. I'm not going to re- 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 relinquish that. He and, he doesn't want to coddle players? He shit, he was coddled. Players. What are you talking about? Like, I, y'all wasn't here when he played here, man. Listen, dog. It was brutal for him as a player. It was brutal. So he knows how this pressure Tell can us, be. Tell us, Trey. Tell us the stories. <laughs> <laughs> it was brutal for him when he was here as a player, dude. Like, it was not, you know, shit. Boy, they were ready to get Doug ass up out of here as a player, dude. You know, for real. Like, just being real. Like, it, it wasn't what – because that was the same year they drafted McNabb. So Big Red brought him in just to kind of be the guy to kind of get five up to speed and then there you go. But it, it wasn't – all peaches and cream for him here, man. You know, they, you know, you know how it could be here for a quarterback. I mean, hell, look at what we're dealing with now. You know, everybody will call him for five. Get him up out of there. Get five in there. But, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, yeah. I, I, I just feel like, you know, when you got a quarterback that's struggling, why not put a little time in with him? Why not, if you need to calm him down, put that time in when you're on the sideline instead of having him sitting up there with Subfell and Jalen Hurts? What the hell are they gonna tell him? You know. What yeah, I'm but maybe then I also, you, you know, it's. Well, I mean, we need to stop trying to like find somebody to talk to this kid. You know, this is year five. <laughs> you was a, you was a damn near the MVP of the league. Like, oh, you're I'm making say, so much money. I, right. Yeah. I mean, I want to say like, damn, like everything shouldn't have to have to all the stars shouldn't have to align for you to perform. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes, right. damn, if they're going to pay you all this money, make a play for us. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like even when shit is falling apart, you're supposed to be that guy that to make that wild play. Shit, case in point. Y'all remember we played the Vikings in the playoff? That game was like shitty. We needed a play. Damn, they gave a screen, a screen to Westbrook 
58 yards later, we win in the game. Like, somebody needs to make a play. And for this team, they need the quarterback to be that somebody. And, you know, it's just everything. Oh, he don't got this person. He don't got that. He don't have Frank Wright. He don't – like, damn, you're a professional. Perfect your craft. That's what you're supposed to do. Regardless of who's coach. But my problem is I think they let him slide with too much in practice. You know what I'm saying? Where everything – where I think – you know, you know how practice is. Your first read is always there. Yeah. We talked about this before. First read is always there. So you never take his first read away from him in practice without telling him. You don't want to tell him, just take it away from him. Have the scout team take it away from him. Then force him to get to his other reaction. Because you can tell in times, if that first read ain't there, he's like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? And their protection breaks down and everything else goes haywire. And then, bam, they go to your sack or turnover. Like, he wasn't going to have a turnover last yesterday, um, yesterday. I mean, that wasn't happening on Sunday. I mean, he was just like, fuck that. I throw this bitch up there, it, up there to, <laughs> the, uh, the, to, to somebody sign up there before I throw an interception. So, you know. Yeah, but me, that kind of like that kind of like put a leash on, 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 on like that, that heroism that he plays with. You know, like that, he was that Brett Favre gunslinger that Brett, mentality. Yeah, I guess he, he was like, like fuck, fuck it. Favre. <laughs> He's like, fuck Favre. I'm not gonna play like that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I already forgiven you, Favre. I've already forgiven you. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that was crazy. I mean, I, it, you know, he, he was kind of inaccurate or whatever, and he played like, I guess you can call it a safe game because he was trying to like avoid the turnovers or whatnot. But they didn't make any wild plays offensively. You know, yeah. I mean, the running game was working. I mean, albeit, you know, hell, the um, third downs, bro. You gotta get third it. downs, yeah. Oh, oh, and nine on third downs. I mean, hell, you ain't gonna win anything if you can't convert a third down. So, for real, yeah. not one but, third down. And I just went through the film again, and every time on third down, I'm like, all right, let me see what's gonna happen. All right, you know what? Fuck it. We never, we never, we didn't even convert a third down. I'm just gonna sit here and just like, all right, you know. And I just I just think the, the, the <laughs> play calling or like the creativity of some of the play calling, man, we know what's coming. We could defend some of that. Like if you're gonna put Jalen Hurts in the game, you gotta take Carson off the field. Take him off the field. Like why why is he on the field? He's gonna block and risk getting injured. You're not gonna throw him the ball. No. I mean that didn't work. I <laughs> mean they tried yeah. that a couple weeks ago. That didn't work. So no, that shit was man. blown up. They tried to call another Philly Philly. That shit was blown up. You know, it, it didn't work. And I'm like, you know? damn, dog, it, it's not going to hurt his confidence if you have a quarterback in there running a few plays here and there and yeah, utilize his athletic ability. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, you drafted him for, for a reason. Don't put him in there with the starting quarterback as well. Like, it's just, oh. I mean, it's just, it's too easy to, to, to defend. Yeah, man. Well, hold on. Before we go any further, let me get, go ahead and get this in right quick. Week 10 of football is in the books, and now it's time to review the tape and get ready for week 11. There's no better place to get in all of the action than with DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. To add to the excitement of week 11, DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing back their can't-miss offer. If you haven't tried DraftKings Sportsbook yet, head to their app store now because you don't want to miss this. DraftKings Sportsbook is giving all new users the chance to earn a sign-up bonus up to $1,000 when signing up using promo code SIDE, S-I-D-E. DraftKings Sportsbook has endless ways for you to bet. From live betting to betting on your favorite players, they'll do it all. Don't worry if football isn't you. DraftKings is giving all MMA fans who sign up now the chance to triple their winnings for any bet placed on UFC 255. DraftKings is safe, reliable, and secure, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code SIDE, S-I-D-E, when you sign up and get up to $1,000. That's promo code SIDE, S-I-D-E, to get a deposit bonus for up to $1,000 for a limited time, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 and older, Pennsylvania only, in partnership with Meadows Racetrack and Casino. Bonus comprised of the first deposit. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER or make better decisions. All right. Back to it. Now, 
there are a couple situations that we just got to touch on, Jack, and I think with you being a center, this would be a good topic for you to kind of take over this right here. Kelsey had a bad game, man, with snapping the ball. Oh, yeah, man. It you happens. Know, <laughs> yeah. But, but he had several bad snaps, man. And, you know, because, I mean, the, the art of the snap when you had gun, I mean, I think it's a very touchy thing, and, you know. And just just walk us through it a little bit. Just, you know, what you saw from it and what what it takes as a center with all the calls and moves and everything that has to happen. Well, first and foremost, you was always taught to just get the snap up, period. You know, worry about the guy in front of you later. But it was a season vet, several times all pro, Super Bowl hero, you know. But yesterday, it was a rough outing for him, mostly because he had, like, a bigger guy lined up over him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for the most part, by him being a smaller guy, you know, he tried to take advantage of his athletic ability and speed. But when you do that, you neglect the snap. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you're moving uh, you're moving faster than what you normally would move regularly, you know, just because you're trying to get a jump, even though you're the center. And that's what I saw a couple times where, you know, he's just trying to get there to get his hands up so he can get his hands on the guy. And when you do that, that offhand that you snap with, it leaves the ball short. Yeah. So that's what I that's what I saw. Like he did, I mean, hell, it was probably like five or six low snaps. Like yeah. pretty much the whole second half. And the one where uh where Carson had to like pick it up and the guy just got blasted. I mean, you know, that, that that's one of those situations where you would like the quarterback to try and get rid of it. But I understand him eating it just because he didn't want to cause a turnover or whatnot. That's just, you know, that 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 was on totally on the center. I mean, but there were some good things, you know, the, on the touchdown run where yeah. uh, Boston Scott hit it up in there. You know, I think that probably was like a 67 slant because I saw him pull around and yeah. like just kick out that off defender outside. So, you know, he didn't have anybody lined up over him. So he he was the guy pulling to get outside. So I think that's where, you know, the Giants kind of like, got in his head a little bit. And once you do that early on, because I saw it throughout the game, you know, he's trying to get there. He's going so hard that he's ducking his head to get there. And yeah. the one guy, Williams, just swam him a couple times. I'm like, damn, you got to keep your head up. You got to keep your head, your head up. Even though he's small and not as powerful as guys uh, that he's going up against, he can position himself to where, you know, all right, just, just make the fight on the line of scrimmage. You don't always have to, like, beat a guy to the spot and ride him out because sometimes those guys are quick enough now where they can go back door and it happened to him a couple of times yesterday. Yeah. And you know, and once once his snaps start getting off, man, Kelsey be firing that bitch back there, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He, he be zipping them bitches back there, man. And they be hey. low. And I mean they be coming. And you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, to me, what is your target for the snap? Where are you trying to put the ball in the quarterback's chest? What, well, like, what are you aiming for? Honestly, you know, it's it's the rhythm of it. It's like a pendulum. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're supposed to keep that 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 kind of uh, pendulum swinging motion, and as soon as that elbow hits your knee, let it go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In his case, by him trying to get there so fast, he's letting it go before because he's trying to, like, get that offhand up to mm -hmm. get in position to make the block. So he's mm -hmm. leaving it short. You got to go through it every time. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Once it, once it becomes muscle memory, like, I'm quite sure they're going to make an emphasis on it during practice this week, but it's not something that, that's going to be a problem, like, the next game and the next game. Like, it's just one of those things where it was just in his head yesterday, and, you know, he'll overcome that, like, by the next game. Easy. Yeah, but he, and he has this time. Like, he'll go through phases, phases like, like this, this like yeah. this, where he'll have a couple snaps that's going to go over the quarterback's head. Or then he start firing them damn low rockets, you know. So it's definitely something that he's gonna have to correct. I, I I thought that, like you said, he was trying to hurry up and get to the guy. And then I thought, to me, I still think that they spread the line a little too thin at times with the calls that they're trying to make. The you know when they declare the mics and all of that stuff, there just how things break out. I still feel like at times they kind of spread them too thin on on the one sack where it was like a fake power where you, you were sending Opeta to the right, but then, you know, they, Opeta tried to go to the widest guy, but then you got a damn DN that he ended up letting go, you know, and then, you know, it, it was just bad communication all around, you know, so I just felt like sometimes they just don't make the right calls and guys just, you know, it, shit just goes to hell. 
But, I mean, you had a game where you had three sacks, 12 quarterback hits in this game. Yeah. And, you know, the, the offensive line, they, you know, they had a rough one yesterday. I mean, they're good running the ball. You know, that's something they can lean on. But you just need it just needs to be called more because they was definitely getting like five, six, you know, yards of pop. But, yeah. you know, you fall in love with the athleticism of the quarterback and then you got your new weapons back. You got Alshon back. You got Roger uh, Rager back. And uh-huh. you want to try to get these guys involved. And, you know, the quarterback kind of have an inaccurate game as far as passing the ball. So it's like, well, that was a waste of opportunity. We didn't get better. We, we didn't get better yesterday. So, you know, this is on the Cleveland now. Yeah. Now, you know what? Because a lot of people say that, all right, the accuracy. Okay. So that, that, that's, that's my next question with this. Because I take it back to the practice as well. Do, do you think it's because you don't have the receivers running full speed and practicing some of these routes? Because it seems like the ball is always a little bit behind them. So if they're in practice, they're running the routes a little slower. So he's putting it where he's been used to throwing it in practice where they're at that spot. But now once you get to game time, you're in game speed, and now the ball is actually behind them now compared to if you were in practice, it would have been spot on. Do you think that has something to do with it? Me? Fuck, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't that shit, bro. I mean, listen, ideally you want your receivers running full speed in practice or else your timing is going to be all fucked up. And I remember hearing the coaches always stress that. So I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily happening unless they just all of a sudden stop stressing, you know, running your routes full speed. I always remember even on light days, you would hear them talking about, you know, you got to run your routes full speed. Even on air, it got to be full speed or else it's just going to throw everything off, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's when I, I just remember them saying that because I was thinking to myself, like, God, damn, <laughs> glad I ain't got to run no goddamn routes. Yeah. I, I do a lot of this shit half speed most days. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, but since they don't, I, I think that throws off a lot of the timing. I think that throws off the accuracy. I think that that creates a lot of the problem, which leads to your staff being not where it needs to be to make sure that your players are ready to come to battle. But Well, also, just getting these new weapons back out there, they haven't been running routes with the quarterback as mm-hmm. frequently as they should be. So their timings, you know, it's, it's not going to be different from what it is in practice. It's just not there. or It's probably not what it was before they were injured. You know what I mean? So I think that's a lot yeah. of different things that are moving around. Yeah, they learn on the fly, uh, pretty much, you know, because you're getting guys back that, you know, the first rounder, they just got him back a couple of weeks ago, and I'm qu- I'm quite sure the timing with him and, you know, number 11 is, like, way off. It's, you know, they just, it's just, uh, it's just going to have to be a work in progress from here until the end of the season, but, you know, it's some talent there, man. Like, I, I actually like Rager. He, yeah. he, he got some speed with him, and, you know, if – if they, if they, like, let him stretch the field a little bit, you know, I think Carson hit him deep in the Washington game. So, I see, mm-hmm. you know, no reason why they can't replicate that, like, moving forward because the last couple games, they rarely sent him downfield. You know, right. it was yeah. you know, 10 yards here, five yards. Like, it was like, yeah, really they, threatening they defense. They do a lot of the, like, the line of the scrimmage stuff with him. Yeah. Keeping yeah. him, like, right within the first five yards before they get in the ball. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. understand that either. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, dude, if he has speed, utilize that shit, man. Like, you know, I mean, sometimes you got to put pressure on their team to stop it, you know? Yeah. Well, I uh, think they, they tried to run two players that were big successful on for him uh, a couple of weeks back. They tried to come with the uh, the big play down the left side of the field to Fogum, but they were on to that shit. The Dallas, I mean, New York was like, oh, yeah, no, nah, we on to that, and they ran Fogum out of bounds. And then they tried to bring Reger up the middle of the field, but – um. And it ended up having it was double. It was covered by two defenders on that one particular play. Then you had that fourth down play, where I felt like Carson shouldn't have gone for a back shoulder throw. He should have just led Reger up the field, up, up the right side of the field, instead of trying to go for a back shoulder throw there. I mean, you know, Reger had to step on the defender, go ahead and let him go get it, use his speed there. But instead, you try to come with a back shoulder throw. Shit, the defender was right there. All right, look, look we moving on to the next one. Y'all got to come off the field. I mean, I just think it was kind of a questionable decision because you're going, you're, you're trusting your rookie going up against their best corner. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, go, go somewhere a, else. But he had a step on him, though. Don't Who try to, yeah, don't go back shoulder. Let him use his speed. Put it out there for him, you know, but. 
Yeah, like this ain't. I mean, like Rager, he's he's not six feet, so yeah, <laughs> I like, mean, you know, so I don't understand gotta, the back shoulder throw. If he's gonna win, he gotta win like immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Let him go get it. Let him go right. get it. Right. Well, cool, man. But well, hey, before we get out of here, though, man, you guys got your manscape packages. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead. Let's give a review on the manscape packages, cause. I got all my stuff down here, man. I got my, but the, the new electric trimmer, the 3.0. Oh, yeah, nice, the lawn, nice. The lawnmower 3.0 with the LED light. You know what I'm saying? The nose hair trimmer, the, the ball wipes, you know what I'm saying? The crop mops, you know, yeah. and all, all the cleansers and everything. So, you know, I, I, people have been hearing me talk about Manscaped for a while now. Why don't y'all go ahead and just share your experience with Manscaped, the new, you know, you know, you know, you know experience. Well, I would say it is quite the uh, quite the smorgas smorgasbord of product that they send our <laughs> way. It was very nice, you know. I uh, do appreciate that. I am uh, I am no stranger to manscaping my myself, uh, but the product itself they do make it more enjoyable. So much so that you know you get a little carried away. And I was making a joke earlier. Yeah, I mean, looking like a hairless cat around here. Uh, <laughs> it's not necessarily so good for these winter months, but uh, I got her under control. Yeah, it's a, a very nice product. Yeah, you like the product? Have you have you tried any of the toners and all of that? No, I haven't got my, I haven't got with the ball toner yet. No. Yeah, yeah, you give it a shot, man. No. Give it a shot, Jack. How you like it? I mean, um, it was pleasantly surprising. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, um. Surprisingly pleasant. Yeah, surprisingly <laughs> pleasantly surprising. <laughs> it was pleasantly surprising. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> oh man, it was awesome. Like twist on it. A you know, little light, you know, a little, a little three point lawnmower. Yeah, the lawnmower three point Very, yeah. very smooth. You know, you know, kind of felt like a newborn baby's ass. You know. <laughs> Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. It, yeah, try it out, man. It's a great product. Um, like I was impressed. Like yeah. I'm not really used to. I man, you know, you just do it the barbaric way. Okay. But with yeah. the lawnmower, with the, with the lawnmower 3.0, you can have precision and a light, so you know yeah. what you can. <laughs> yeah. To illuminate the grooming area. Yeah, yeah. the light thing. Sure you oh, tight. That's true, though. Hey, man, you can't be clipping the wrong thing now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. But that's cool, yeah. man. I, I want to thank Manscaped for sending that out, man. You know, uh, that's really awesome. I've been doing reads for them now for probably, what, about two years now? So, man, it's, it's a really cool product. I, I, I try to tell everybody, man. If you can, man, make sure you go on to manscaped.com. That's M-A-N-S-C-A-P-E-D, Manscaped. Yeah, manscaped.com, and use the promo code TAIL, T-A-L-E. That's manscaped.com, promo code TAIL, T-A-L-E, and get 20% off with all free shipping with your order. So, yeah, man, check it out. They have the Lawnmower 3.0. They have the, the Crop Mop. For, for on the go freshness, they have the ball toner for your rhino skin, you know what I'm saying? And make sure you, you tone up the skin underneath there. Uh, they have a little cologne for you. They have, a, you know, some, some, some body wash. I mean, you know, they even have the foot duster for, you, for your feet. They even sell mints. I mean, with you being in the pandemic, everybody has a face mask on. I mean, shit, we should all come out of this, this pandemic. Uh, with, you know, conscious of your breath now. So, I mean, I mean, you know, with it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you should be well aware of what you're presenting with your breath. So, I mean, take Indeed. advantage of, <laughs> of what Manscaped has got for you, man. But yeah, man, this has been awesome again, man. Hey, hey before we get out of here, Jack, though, let's talk about the wife's song, the Mrs. Yeah, uh, man. Salon. All right, man. Uh, if you want to get your hair did or done, or if you need any hair care products, please visit sevenzen.com that's sevenzen.com i'm not about to spell it because i don't want to mess it up but it's easy to look up um it's on youtube facebook twitter and also when you're doing your shopping yes some hair care products uh some skincare products use the promo code blindside 
For fifteen yeah. percent off your order. Also, you all orders over fifty bucks, I think, requires free shipping or is eligible for free shipping. So, sevenzan.com, and the salon is located at five twenty three Delphi Drive. All right, cool, man. What's said, man? We gonna get up here and go get watch some uh, Monday night football, man. Let's go. Let's go see what Foles can do, man. Let's go see what Foles can do, man. Let's go see what Foles can do, man. What they do. My brother's the man is past. Yeah, the ghost of Philly past. Like I had to argue with somebody on Twitter. I'm like, man, what the fuck? All right, dude, you sit up here arguing with me about this shit. I mean, it doesn't matter. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You know, like that. You know, no, hey, no, then, no. You just hit the button and reset it. He'd be back in a minute. He, he's gone. He's not coming back. I mean, you know, that's it. I mean, you know. The, that's it. So what you sit up here, we sit up here arguing about this bullshit. I mean, nah, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. I ended up having to mute him. I'm like, dog, I, I usually don't like muting and blocking motherfuckers, but dog, your ass is getting muted. Because I ain't got time for this shit. I'm trying to watch film and you fucking with me about foes. I don't, you know, he's gone. He's gone. Wince is the way now. That's it. Wince is the way. Yeah. <laughs> Wince the way. Wince is the way. I don't know yeah. about get. I don't know about getting on the wagon, but I can. I, I can get with Wince is the way. <laughs> yeah, Wince is the way. Is the way. <laughs> hey, but how about this one, guys? How about this one? The truth hurts. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh. oh hey. Hopefully we we won't have to use that one no time soon, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, All right, All right let's, man. let's go see what Paul's doing. All right, man. Let's right, to the next time, man. I see y'all, bro. All right, man. Yo. Toodaloo, motherfucker.